In this video, we're going to look at partial molar quantities. Now, up to this point, every single system we've discussed, for the most part, has been a closed system in which the composition of the system is not changing at all. So we would look at gas samples where we know a fixed amount of gas is doing some expansion, compression, what have you, right? We've looked at these uh, scenarios where the composition of our system is not changing. What happens when you have scenarios where the composition of your system is changing, where maybe you're forming a mixture and the composition of your mixture is changing as you add another component? Maybe you're making a solution and you're adding some solvent. Or maybe you're looking at a gas um, expansion that's allowing a little bit of gas to evacuate from your system. Um, in those scenarios, we would need to know how the composition of the system is affecting our thermodynamic properties. And that's where partial molar quantities come into play. So um, let's take a general uh, just thermodynamic variable. Let's just call it X. Let's say that X is a, a function of temperature and pressure, right? We can define the partial molar um, quantity here for X. So I usually use X bar for a molar quantity. So I just put bar over anything, just like we did for the molar Gibbs energy, molar volume, or what have you. That same notation uh, carries over for partial molar quantities as well. So we will have uh, X bar sub I for the component I. And we will define the uh, partial molar quantity here as the change in X with, respects to the, with respect to the changing number of moles of component I at constant temperature, pressure, and with every other uh, component held constant as well. So I'm putting N prime for every other component. So saying it's a multi-component system, uh, if it's a multi-component system, we're looking specifically at the change with respect to the ith component, every other component is held constant for this partial derivative. So this is a partial molar quantity, so partial, molar quantity and think about what this says to us right this is basically telling us that this is the fractional component um, the fractional change of this property with respect to the changing number of moles of a specific species or a specific part of this composition right so um, so this will be really useful to us in situations where we have changing composition of our system and uh, the most prototypical example of that is any type of mixture. So I think the easiest way to visualize partial molar quantities, or at least the easiest one to visualize, is the partial molar volume, right? Because you already have a, a good sense of, of volume and probably the best physical sense of volume of anything we've talked about at this point. So let's kind of uh, look at a scenario where we can use the partial molar volume to, to help us answer a general question. So in this figure, I've drawn um, just two components, so two isolated components um, that are brought together into a mixture. So we have component A and we have component B. So let's say that component A is 100 milliliters of water. So we got 100 milliliters of H2O. And let's say that component B is 100 milliliters of methanol. So we got 100 milliliters of methanol, right? So if we take 100 milliliters of water and we take 100 milliliters of methanol and we put them together in a mixture, what do you think the final volume is going to be? Now, you might say 200. If you do, uh, that is not correct. So it's actually going to be a little bit less than 200. So the final volume here is going to be approximately 193 milliliters when you add together 100 milliliters of water and 100 milliliters of methanol. And you might be thinking, what, what happened to the law of conservation of mass, right? What happened to the other seven milliliters, right? Um, so I can give you a molecular level explanation, which I'll do now, and then we'll talk about how partial molar volume comes into play. But think about it. So if you add 100 milliliters of water to 100 milliliters of water, of course you would get 200 milliliters as your final uh, volume. But when you mix water and you mix methanol, now you have those, those hyd that hydrogen bond network that would normally keep water molecules a particular distance apart. That's no longer happening. Now they're surrounded by ethanol and they're forming different 
uh, intermolecular interactions that are kind of constricting the volume a little bit. So you actually end up with a little bit less volume uh, when you add methanol and water. It's going to, the final volume is going to constrict a little bit. And what this shows is that there's going to be a different uh, contribution from each, uh, from each component of this total mixture, right? There's a different comp uh, contribution to the volume that we can actually calculate. So um, let's look at what the volume, how we could calculate the total volume, right? So we know that the volume is going to be a function of temperature, pressure, the number of moles of component A, our water, and the number of moles of component B, our methanol, right? So in, in, in total, we have a function that is a four variable function. It's a function of temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of each of our two components. Everything's changing in this, right? We're forming a mixture, we're adding in the water and methanol. So the number of moles of each of these components is changing. So if we wanted to write out a total derivative for this guy, right, we would have to have four partial derivatives that contribute to that total derivative. If we wanted to do dv, right, we would have dv dt, and this will be at constant pressure, constant number of moles of A, and constant number of moles of B, right, dt, plus dv dp, right, constant temperature, constant number of moles of A, constant number of moles of B, dp, right, then we would have the partial of volume with respect to the change in A, right? This will be at constant temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of B, right? The change in, in A. Plus the final term would be dV dN B, right? Constant temperature, constant pressure, and constant number of moles of A, right? These last two terms are partial molar volumes, right? So this fits the exact definition that we wrote out in the beginning for a general property, right? This would be called the partial molar volume. So these derivatives are the contribution of that component. When you change the amount of that component was the contribution to the volume, right? So if we hold temperature and pressure constant, then we can simplify this uh, total derivative a little bit, right? So at constant temperature and pressure, right? So I have dV at constant temperature and pressure, right? That guy's just gonna be equal to these last two derivatives, right? So if we're at constant temperature and pressure, then this first term goes away because dt is zero. Second term goes away because dp is zero. Right, so we're just left over with those partial molar volumes. So we'll have dV dNA, right? We got constant temperature, constant pressure, constant Mb, dNB, uh, dNA, yeah, plus dV dNB, constant temperature, constant pressure, constant Na. All right. Okay. So you're just left with these two terms as a result, right? So now I'm going to use the notation that we have here to write these partial molar volumes, right? So I'm going to say that dV is just equal to the partial molar volume of A, dNA, plus the partial molar volume of B, dNB. Right. So this gives us a way that we can write out a total volume expression um, just by integrating with respect to the change. Right. So if we want to get the total volume. Right. So we'll get the change in volume dV. Right. In fact, since we're dealing with the mixture. Right. So let me write this out as an integral. Right. Since we're dealing with our mixture, which initially doesn't exist until we make it, our initial limit of integration can be zero. So we're going to be integrating from zero to the final volume right, of dV. And so that means each one of our individual integrals, right, we're going to be integrating from zero to our final number of moles of A, right? Same thing with this term. We're going to be integrating with respect to from zero to the final number of moles of B, right? 
So when we carry out these integrals, we end up with a really simple expression for our total volume. Our total volume is just going to be equal to the partial molar volume times the number of moles of A plus the partial molar volume of B times the number of moles of B. Right, so we end up with this really simplified expression for our total volume that just depends on the, um, the number of moles of A and B respectively and their partial molar volumes, right? Now, partial molar volume is gonna be something that is dependent on a lot of factors, but mostly it's dependent on the composition. So as the composition of your solution changes, the partial molar volume is going to change. And, and hopefully that makes sense given the definition of our partial molar quantity. If you have water molecules that are surrounded by a bunch of uh, methanol molecules, um, that's gonna look a little different from water surrounded by only a few uh, methanol molecules. So, uh, so this partial molar volume is composition dependent. So first we'll need the molar volumes of pure water and pure methanol. So this is before they're actually added into the mixture. The molar volume for pure water, kind of sticking with the uh, color scheme here, so the yellow is for water. So the molar volume for pure water is going to be 18.07 milliliters per mole. And then for methanol, for pure methanol, right, our molar volume is going to be 40.75 milliliters per mole. Right, so this is for methanol. And the one up here is the um, molar volume for pure water. Right, so we have our molar volumes for our pure substances. So what we need to do first is to calculate the number of moles of each one that we're adding into the mixture. Then we'll uh, get the partial molar volumes for each one in order to calculate the total volume. So let me start that calculation on another slide. So first to get the number of moles of water that we add. So the number of moles of A is just going to be equal to the volume of A that we add over the molar volume of pure water, right? So once you, so we're gonna use 100 milliliters here and the molar volume of water, 18.07. From that, you get 5.53 moles of water that we're adding. Now for the methanol, right, same calculation. So we're just going to take the volume of B that we're adding and the molar volume of methanol. And when you take that ratio, you get 2.45 moles. Right, so this is the number of moles of each one of our components. Now, like I said earlier, the partial molar volume is going to be dependent on the comp composition, right? For this 50-50 mixture, these are the, the following are our partial molar volumes. So for water, our partial molar volume of A is going to be equal to 17.74 milliliters per mole. And for the methanol, volume of B, we're going to have 38.76 uh, milliliters per mole. Right. And when I say a 50 50 mixture, I meant by volume, right? Obviously, we have a different mixture per mole, right? So this molar composition is going to determine what these partial molar volumes are. OK, so now that we have those, we have everything we need to plug back into our expression for the total volume, right? Our total volume only required the partial molar volumes and the number of moles of each component. So we have everything we need to plug in. So our total volume uh, is going to be 17.74 milliliters per mole, right, times the number of moles of water, right, 5.53 moles right plus the partial molar volume for methanol 76 milliliters per mole and the number of moles of methanol are 2.45 moles all right so when we look at our unit cancellation here right moles cancels out so we're just left with milliliters which makes sense since we're after a volume and when you calculate that you get 193.1 milliliters. 
right? Which is exactly what we saw in the beginning as our approximate volume for this water methanol mixture. So the mixture isn't exactly going to be 200 milliliters, even though you add 100 milliliters of methanol and 100 milliliters of water. And through this example calculation, we're able to see exactly why, because their contributions to the total volume are different. And what governs that contribution to the total volume is the partial molar volume. Now we can define partial molar quantities for almost all of our thermodynamic properties, and they work in a similar way. They're a little bit harder to visualize than this partial molar volume, but they work in exactly the same way, a partial contribution to that quantity based on the change in the uh, number of moles of that component.